Hello everybody, this is Travis Blaze and welcome back to another part 24 of Animating Arc, Developing Arc. Hey, it's another lunchtime, so it's Wednesday. Hope you guys are doing good and look what I got. I'm in my new studio today. So I've after like four months, I want to say it was probably been four months of diligently working with a really good friend of ours who has been working on our house um, here and then uh, Chocho's house. Uh, just, I learned so much. We, we built literally, this was just an attic. Uh, there was rafters, you know, you could see the, the roof and everything. It's, there was no walls in here whatsoever. We started with frames and drywall and electrical and we custom made that door right there and I designed it so I could have my painting sitting right back there. So I'm pretty excited about it. But um, we just put the floors in yesterday and uh, yeah, we're here. We're in the new space and it, it actually works really, really well. What do you think? Do you like it? Yeah, yeah it's good. So I've got, uh, I've got someone here with me today. It's not Jacob manning uh, the, the chat room. We have today, let me switch it over. Where are we? There we go. See if it if it works. Oh, I'm gonna. I gotta put on my. Let's see here. There we go. Webcam settings. Gonna knock it down just a little bit. Here we go. Say hello. I'll, I'll scoot over there. Say hello to. Mateo. Say hello, Mateo. So Mateo, this is the other part of the room right here. So Mateo is the youngest of Chocho's clan, and uh, he's going to be sitting here helping us uh, in the chat room. So how many people do we have in the chat room today? Uh, you got you got a. Uh, are there people saying hello? Yeah. Yeah, you got to you got to tell me when people say hello. You got to read them off, yeah. huh? You got to read them off. Read them off right now. Say, hey, who says hello to me today? Land, Life Fantasy X? Yeah. Um, Speak up louder. Swanimation. Swanimation. All right. Hey, Swanimation. How you doing? Brush Mechanic said hi to the attic. Uh, yes, Brush Mechanic. And then who else is out there? Uh, Azur said hello. Az okay, awesome. Hello. Julian Torres Martin said hello. Hello, hello, hello to everybody. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I like it. I like this. Nate Williams says, hello. Life Fantastic or Fantasy X says, that must be cool. How's the view from up there? Uh, the view is actually pretty good. Not bad. I'm, uh, I'm not complaining. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the, the rooftop of my neighbor, but I like my neighbor, so it's all good. All good. So, yeah. Um, Yes, keep going. Single Rider 1 says hello. Single Rider 1 says hello. You got you to gotta speak up. We'll, we'll get some enthusiasm into him. I think we need, he needs some food or... You want some food, by the way? Mom's making you breakfast. Your mom's making you breakfast? Oh, okay. I've got, I've got a little plate of hors, hors d'oeuvres. Let's see, I got... I got um, uh, apples. We got peanut butter toast. Peanut butter... And, Fresh jam, homemade jam, and avocado. Man, I got a whole smorgasbord of stuff. And nothing is complete without my big kahuna cup of coffee. So who else says hello today? Brush Mechanic said hello to me again. Um, Nuvine 510 said hello. And then Erica Bay said hello. Oh, awesome. And you can keep scrolling down as you go. Yeah. Yes, very delicious. So a couple of things today I wanted to announce before we get into drawing. Um, it's been really awesome. I mean, I got really excited because I was working late last night. I'm going to take this off so you guys can still hear me regardless. I'm going to put it right there. Um, the, this whole ordeal of the house, uh, this attic, was such uh, a labor of love. And I mean, 
I'm so happy to be up here and and it being quieter, yes? So now I don't have to hear people uh, right next to me in the kitchen anymore, as I was doing before. But um, a couple of good things I'm going to announce today. Um, if you guys didn't already know, um, last Friday we uh, released a pre-order sale of my new tutorial, my first tutorial ever, uh, and it's and it's with Calipeg. And I'm doing a full-on tutorial about how to animate in Calipeg by yours truly, truly, Travis. And my approach to keyframe animation um, and also storyboards. Um, I dive into the am doing a little bit of effects, how you can do keyframe effects when you don't have a lot of the fancy tools like Gaussian Blur or Smear Blur, different things that you can do to uh, create keyframe effects. Um, I did. I do an example of like fire, and I do an example of like glistening water. You know, like God rays going into in, in underwater. And then I go through my whole thumbnailing process. Um, one of the disclaimers that I do want to say: anyone out there that is getting Calipeg or has pre-ordered Calipeg. We are in the midst of doing an update because it took us so long uh, with COVID and everything else that's been happening. Um, it took us a little while longer than anticipated to uh, put this uh, release out. Um, since then, Calipeg, who is an amazing uh, group of people, have already put a new version of the interface out there. So my discussion of the interface in this, pre this version that you'll be getting uh, with the Calipeg tutorial uh, will be from, one, from the first version, but we are going to be recording an update to that because there's a lot of new added features uh, that I want to go through and touch base on, and plus the interface looks slightly different uh, with some of the icons. Um, something very uh, unexpected that they would get it done so quickly, but one of their goals is to this year is to get out uh, a couple more versions of this and as that happens um, if there comes a huge update I might just do a whole new additional uh, tutorial lesson to add to the Calipeg one but um, this one still is really I'm, I'm pretty excited about it like I said it's my first one uh, Calipeg is also promoting it on their website so if you go to their website um, you can check that out and also if you have an iPad you can download Calipeg for seven days free. They have a seven day free trial. And again, the, the app is super, super inexpensive. Uh, you can buy it for the lifetime. Um, or like, I think it's like 56 American dollars. Um, you can do it for uh, $9, I think for the year. And you can do a monthly subscription of like a dollar ten or dollar eleven or something like that. I don't know what the exchange rate is yet, um, but it's super inexpensive. And the reason why they, they had that subscription type tier base is because they they know that as they move forward throughout the year and into the next few years, they're going to be adding new, bigger features to Calipeg. Calipeg's whole goal is to create um, a mini production keyframe pipeline that you can do all on your iPad. Just imagine all of us doing a full-on animated production just using your iPad, which I, I find pretty amazing. So anyways, with that, um, anybody have any questions out there? Is, is Calipeg iPad only? Yes, Calipeg is iPad only. Um, as they progress, oh, oh, speaking of, um, as because just so you know, they're a small crew. They're they're literally like um, four or five people that develop this Calipeg app, and then they have all of these beta testers like myself and Scribbler and Carlos and Jack and Dave and all of these awesome people that are that are um, beta testing that are great animators and giving them a lot of good feedback. Um, one of the things that they're trying to do, one of the things that they hadn't been able to do when they first started out because they were so small, was taxes uh, in different countries. So not every country was being offered Calipeg. But now, I was told, Calipeg is offered in Mexico, which means, I'm hoping, 
uh, because I have a huge Latin uh, community and friends that live in Chile and, and Brazil, Sao Paulo, uh, Mexico. Um, I'm hoping that it, in Peru, I'm hoping that it, it, it goes through all of the, the Latin countries. And so far we've got Mexico, which is, a, a, which is kind of a cool thing, kind of a big deal. So check that out uh, if you get a chance. Yes. You can just yell, hey, I got a question. Okay. Someone said, asked you if Calipeg is used in the industry too. Uh, Calipeg is not used in the industry. Actually, I take that back. I'm using it in the industry. I am going to be one of the first people out there that's going to promote this thing, this Calipeg app in the industry. No, it is not an industry standard because it literally just came out a few months ago. So as Calipeg grows and as we're promoting Calipeg myself um, and as I'm building these tutorials, I'm trying to help a community grow uh, with Calipeg and build animators that can help and use this software program to benefit them in their own productions. Now I've used it already when I'm, so my pipeline is basically this. You see on the screen here, I've got TV paint, right? So I've got TV paint and then um, I'll show you. Uh, and then when I'm not using TV paint, I am using, uh, like let's say I go on a trip, on a weekend trip and I still need some work to do, but I need to do something on the go so most of my bread and butter is, is through storyboarding. So right now I'm working for Netflix full time and I'm working on a feature production. And I also do freelance from time to time on other productions as well, other projects. Um, but full time is, is that. So if I'm working, I need something done and I need to work on the go, I can export anything that I'm doing in TV paint. I like to use TV paint for storyboarding on my desktop. Uh, just because I've gotten used to doing it that way. I'm not a huge fan. I, a lot of people use Photoshop um, I'm not a big fan of Storyboard Pro, although I use it. I do use it and I do use it when I'm, I'm on a television production so, Yes Someone said also on the iPad there are so many other apps for everything you need to make the rest of the video If you get a good mic for it, you can do it all on there Yes, oh and soon and very soon they're going to be uh, working on a way to import um, audio into Calipeg so that you can do dialogue. But even without the dialogue input, you can still treat it like a traditional pipeline. So back to what I was saying is that when, when I am on the go, I just export my information, my JPEG sequence, uh, what I want to do, and I can import it into Calipeg, and then I can go in and I can start... Uh, boarding or drawing or if I'm in a thumbnail phase or something I can easily take Calipeg app and I can start thumbnailing my boards and then I can export that whole thing as a PNG sequence right now I've at, I've requested them to start doing PNG uh, PSD sequences uh, so they're working on that hopefully they'll have that sometime soon so I, exporting in PSD is really important especially if you're working in a bigger production um, if that capability is, is going to happen, then that is a, could be a game changer for a lot of different things. So, um, like I said, I can then do that, draw on that, export my PNG sequence, and then dro simply drop it back in the TV paint as a, as a PNG sequence, and bam, I can keep working again. So it's really it's really efficient that way. Yes. Someone asked um, if Calipeg will have a ground scrubbing feature like TV paint. Um, it will, I think, yes, we, they're looking at trying to develop a scrubbing feature, uh, for TV paint. As a matter of fact, um, let's see here. Uh, I'll just do this really, really quick. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do. Either later on today, maybe in the evening or possibly tomorrow, I will do a quick, uh, I'll come back and do a special Calipeg kind of like intro to kind of talk about Calipeg, what's going out there, what's new with it. And then that will be a nice introduction into the Calipeg tutorial that I've, I've put out there for you guys. Um, but um, if you want, I can do go ahead and do that at one point. Uh, maybe either tomorrow I can go in and I can do a, or the, maybe later on this evening even, I can do some kind of uh, live stream where I, I'd share my screen here 
and I can simply kind of go through the interface a little bit and talk about things and kind of just get you guys uh, um, where you can then ask me questions basically directly about Calipeg. But, um, yes? Someone, Black Monolith 96 asked if they missed their drawover in the last stream. Oh, Black Monolith, you did not miss the drawover in the last stream. We were not able to get to you. We were working on uh, um, Ridiculous's project. And then there's, there's you and one other person for next week that we're going to do drawovers. And anyone else there, that's, by the way, Drawover Mondays on Twitch is a big thing now. Um, a lot of people are showing up. A lot of people are, are getting the buzz about it. This is where I'm offering to you guys an opportunity to send me your work, whether it's character designs, storyboards, whether you know you can do character designs, storyboards, uh, um, animated scene, so characters. You know, if you want me to do a drawover, like I can simply you say, hey Travis, I've got. I've got this, this character that's a, a cute little bunny rabbit, you know, with little beady eyes and a nose and teeth. Can you do a drawover for me? And I'll go, yes, send it to me. Go to sketchtoanimate.com. That is, and I'll show it to you again. And you're going to see, you're going to see uh, Mr. Mateo here. You're gonna to go to Sketch Animate down below, right here, okay? You're gonna go there, and you're gonna to go to Draw Over Mondays. And then from there, you're gonna click that, and that's gonna give you instructions on how to send me your work. And it's gonna, you're basically gonna send it to me in a Google Drive. I'm gonna get it in an email, and then I'm gonna download it, and then I'm gonna put it up there, and then we'll do first come, first serve, and we'll kinda of go through the list of doing draw overs. So how a draw over works, essentially, I'll go back again here. Yes. Someone asked if you, you, they said, can I animate a voice track in Calipeg? Uh, you cannot animate a voice track in Calipeg as of yet. Um, they don't have voice tracks, but what you can do is, and this is what I've been telling everybody, um, and real quick, just, just so I don't lose topic, draw overs are simply this. If I am... If you send me an animated scene um, or a character design like this right here, like we have, and you want me to do a draw over it, which I can do. I'm gonna, so if this is a character design, you say, hey, Travis, I need, I need this, this drawn over for me. And this is the sketch you sent. Well, all I'll do, uh, what I'll do is I'll go through and we'll talk about what your intention is for the, for the character design. I always talk about story. What is the reason why you drew this? Is it for a movie? Is it for a video game? Is it for a personal project? What is the story behind this character? Who, is, who are they? What are they? Um, and then you kind of build on this idea. And then I go through and I talk about my approach. Like what stylistically, how do you want it? Do you want it to look more cubic, cubic you know, more graphic? Um, do you want it to be more realistic? Um, if you want it to be more realistic, we could, I could do a quick draw over in red. And I, typically what I do is I talk through as I'm drawing over your character. Last, last Monday, this past Monday, I did a draw over over Brian from Ridiculous, uh, his name's Ridiculous on Twitch. And he sent me the scene and I just went through and I kind of roughed out a whole new scene over it to kind of give him some ideas or thoughts as to how he can approach um, his rough animation. And the week before that, I did a lizard animation running across screen and I talked about layout and background and how you can manipulate the pan. Um, and just, my goal is to give you suggestions to how to improve and get it closer to the vision that you want for your thing. It's not about, hey, let's make it a Travis drawing. It's about, let's make it a Brian or a Dylan or a Fantasy X, Life Fantasy X drawing. That's what that the whole intention of this. And draw overs are also something that I, I do uh, in my daily routine with work. Uh, my director does it all the time. So if I'm you know, I'm over here, I'm going, hey, you know, maybe you want to push, uh, push the, the face a little bit more and g give it a little bit more depth to it. Uh, maybe you want to, um, you know, bring, bring the head up shape a little bit here. And maybe you want to add some cheeks within that shape that you have. Uh, and then, you know, you have the little nose. 
and then uh, hold on one second, and then you know maybe you want to add teeth. Uh, you know, I'm just giving it a little bit more depth. Maybe the questions uh, that you have. Oh, that's another thing is ask questions along the way during the live stream we uh, for draw over money is we just basically simply ask people they can ask us anything they want and also if you're part of the draw overs you send what questions you would like to have answered when it comes to your work so if you have a specific thing that you want me to address in your artwork um, I can do that so and I would just simply sit sit here like I'm doing now and draw over something like this and kind of you know talk about how I'm blocking out I'm thinking of the perspective uh, you know the angle in which the drawing was drawn or the sketch was drawn and then I'll go in and just help push this design a little bit more yes Mateo you have a question that's gonna be Monday next Monday and it's only on twitch so basically you have to uh, subscribe to Twitch and if you like what we're doing you can also become a you can subscribe to Twitch or you can just uh, come on check it out and if you like us then you can subscribe but the idea is, is simply to um, have that as a one avenue for people to uh, get some sort of one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, feedback from someone like myself who's been in this industry for the last 30 years and that's been uh, that's been really successful so far and I'm really I love doing it um, I love helping others and I love uh, giving feedback I mean it helps me become a better artist on top of that so yes someone, someone said may I send you something that I just did for kicks uh, you send me something at this very second um, because at this very second I am going to um, be going into my arc boards um, but you can send it to me for next Monday stream um, and if you go to twitch.tv uh, we can type that in the chat room type it in the chat room uh, go to twitch.tv forward slash that angle slash um, sketch to animate and then we'll put that in there, and that's where you're gonna go um, for the drawovers. So essentially, I'll do this. So what you can see here, and then I'll talk about it, and I'll go, "Hey, look! So there's your drawing before, right? And here's your and here's your drawing afterwards." So that's that's what sort of a drawover process is, and I apply that to scenes where you're animating a scene or if you're um, storyboarding a sequence I talk about you know character design is one aspect of things but then going into and, and actually uh, tr figuring out how to compose a character in an environment or if it's an acting scene um, it gets more complex so I go in more in depth with those as well so you can send me any one of those three uh, things for me to go through and, and talk about and we, we can we can have fun on Monday nights and uh, the more the merrier I mean if we can get usually we, we stay on for three hours but sometimes like last night uh, the other night it went on for like four and a half hours so uh, it went a little bit longer and I forgot to mention I also do a giveaway so last week's giveaway um, Every, every Monday, I do a prompt drawing. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, yes, we have another uh, question? Yeah, someone said, after you draw over someone's work, <clears throat> would, you like to, would you like them to send you an updated version of your feedback? Oh, absolutely. If they want to send me an updated version of their feedback, I would love that. I mean, it helps me to see if I really, you know, my goal is to help you guys. And if you give me feedback and I would love to see it and I would love if you don't mind me sharing it too as a matter of fact at some point I'm gonna be sharing with you some drawovers that I did uh, for I have uh, an unofficial men mentee working with me right now out of Vancouver her name's Tamlin and Tamlin is working on my short um, a short film called Ah Nuts which is something I did several years ago I wrote the script uh, and then I had my my partner in crime she copy edited it for me 
and um, I am having a Tamlin is taking a, a section of that and boarding that out. And then I did some drawovers for her and I can share with you. That actually might be fun to do is share with you how I approach that. And maybe I can maybe later on in this, this segment when I get a couple of more thumbnails of uh, the ARC boards, I can kind of open that up and maybe share, share that a little bit with you today. And she said it was okay. I always make sure that it's okay with everyone that I share your artwork online live because I don't want to embarrass or make people feel uncomfortable in any way. So I'm going to show you last week. Let's see, where is it? I have draw over Mondays. There we go. Uh, oh, there it is. I'm going to share this with you real quick. So this, this I did last week, or this past Monday. This was a drawing. I took a photo of it because this is the only copy that I have. Um, and what I do during draw over Monday. So it's it's not just draw overs. We're also doing prompts. All of anyone that's in the chat room during that that evening gets to choose what I get to draw for one hour. Uh, I'm going to turn this off because it's getting hot here. Um, we get to draw for one hour. I, I draw for one hour any prompt that you guys want me to do. We choose, we pick it, I draw it, I do it digitally, and then I print it. I print it out on a nice cardstock paper and I sign it. And then I hold it up and anyone that uh, wants it, everyone puts a number in and then we do a random generator and then the lucky number gets that drawing that I printed. And then what I end up doing is I delete the file so it doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. It only exists on this uh, copy that you have and the photo that I took of it. So every week is something random. Like this one took about 45 minutes to an hour to do. Um, they're fun. Um, I enjoy doing them because it's always, I'm always having to think out of the box when it comes to everyone's ideas. So it's pretty fun. Anyways, any other, do you have any other questions? No questions? Oh, hello everybody. So let's get back into um, doing a little bit of arc. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because we don't need this anymore. I'm gonna delete that. And so where we left off is we just finished, um, we just finished working on the title sequence storyboards or thumbnails that if you um, rather. Uh, and we are now going to, I'm gonna pull down the script here. See if we can get it, there we go. I'm gonna pull down a script and I'm gonna show you a little, share with you just a section of, there we go, where we're at. So this is a script, ARC, and we just, you know, again, I am going through every, if you're just new to this channel, um, I've been doing this, this is part 24. So I've done 24 live streams of developing ARC. Yes? Someone asked, sorry, but when is the giveaway? Uh, so the giveaway is every Monday. Again, part of my Draw Over Monday on Twitch from 6 to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And now I know it doesn't work for everybody with that time zone. It works for some and not all. Um, but 6 to 9 every Monday Pacific Standard Time on Twitch, you uh, at some point I will be drawing this sketch and giving it away to a random person on the Twitch channel. So the more people we get in there, the better better chances, or, or not the better chances, but <laughs> it was, you know, we, we've always had a consistency of like nine to 22. Now this time we had 22 or 33 people and, and every week it's growing and growing. So we're getting a lot more interest and a lot more people that want to see drawovers happen. So, um, but yes, come there usually around seven ish, eight ish midway through is when we do the, the drawing and then the giveaway. So here we have the script and this is the, the first page which is, I'm calling it title sequence or sequence one. And this is, out, this is the, the, the 
narration and the script. And we went through that already, so I storyboarded that. And now we're going into a, um, right here, it starts at the top of, at the end or bottom of page one, and the top of page two is the beginning of sequence two. Question. Yes. Naveen510 uh, has a comment. They said it was, it's, they said it seems highly unlikely that, unlikely that Gary didn't hear the launch sequence from the control room bathroom. So it would be nice if he told someone that he would be putting in earphones to review the launch instructions or whatever. Oh, that's a, that's an interesting idea. I like I like I like the idea that you have. Um, I um, the right now that if if I have if I ever reintroduce Gary, and Gary is just a little comedy relief to kind of get you into the the origin story and get you into um, introducing the main characters. So um, at some point we've talked about maybe introducing Gary again. In later episodes, maybe Gary is on the, you know, for a while we're like, we, we only see Gary in the beginning and then maybe 10 episodes, maybe 11 episodes into this, maybe we'll do an introduction of Gary where Gary's actually in search of their, uh, cock, uh, of their ship. Or maybe, <laughs> or maybe we do an alternate universe reality where Gary is actually... Uh, like maybe episode 22, uh, they come across a mysterious ship that's sort of dormant and floating. And you, f and you find an older uh, skeleton shriveled up Gary uh, who's, been, who's from an, another time zone or maybe he was, who's been searching for them. And they just basically made a big loop and ran into his sh ship. They also said, but that person didn't hear them because he was on a Bluetooth call themselves but answered all right to whomever it was they were talking to and then they, they also said gary goes on thinking that the person heard him well those are th those are also who said this the same person naveen 500 naveen five, oh, well actually those are really good good ideas um i like I, I like all of the i like how you guys really are starting to think um in terms of story when it comes to me doing this um, and kind of sharing with you guys this. And it'd be great if you guys, um, the whole goal for me is to share with you what I'm doing and how my approach is. And I always love getting advice and, and or getting uh, feedback from everyone as I'm doing this live. That's kind of the fun of it. Um, but I like to see you guys take your thoughts and ideas that you might be sharing with me. And I wanna see you guys start creating your own shows. The, the whole point of me sharing you this experience is that to get you inspired to create your own thing and, okay. and, and build your own project. Yes. Mom asked if I can eat my sandwich while you're doing your stream since it's a lunchtime stream. Mom, Mom asked if you can eat. Yeah, yeah, you can eat it. Yeah, sure, why not? You guys mind if uh, he eats a sandwich, uh, eats some food while he's doing the chat room? She'll have to come up here, though. You can't, you can't okay. leave your... I'm paying him to do this, by the way, so it's not like he's doing this for free. Anyways, I got my peanut butter and jelly jam here. Hold on. Mmm. 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 That make you hungry? Yes. Oh, you can't touch that. You can't have that. I offered it to you earlier. Now you don't want it. Now you want it. Really? You want some of that? You can have one. Yeah. But not that one. Oh, don't ruin that. Don't ruin the chat now. He just dropped the iPad. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. No, he dropped the iPad. No. No Dr. Destructo on my iPad, please. Okay. So who do we got in there in the chat room? So let, let's get back into it. No, no chats for a little bit. I need to focus. So I'm going to go in and start. I'm going to read to you guys. Mm. Gosh, it's so good. I'm going to read to you guys. Uh, where I'm at with thumbnailing this next thing. Now, everyone knows that I've done some beat boards. I did beat boards for the entire show. And now I'm going in, I'm doing thumbnails. So here we go. Interior space station test room. Afternoon. Extreme close-up of Gallus is wearing... But here we go. Gallus is wearing a makeshift helmet and strapped into what appears to be a cockpit. Gallus. Ready? 
set, let's do this. Gallus starts spinning through the air. Gallus continues, approaching G-force. Wide shot. Gallus is not in a, in, a, in a cockpit. He is strapped into a car seat and being swung in a circle by Sue, who is now squealing with excitement. Bo takes no intently. Bo is, Bo is the, the, uh, the bull, by the way, and Sue is the pig. The rope is stressed, and it snaps. Gallus collides with the wall and flattens like a pancake. He mumbles with his teeth, still stuck in the wall. That felt like G-force pain to me. Bo looks at his G-force meter and a scale that starts with A and ends with G. It starts with A and ends with G. The arrow shows that they made it to C-force. Bo, looks like we only made it to C-force. There's only one, there's only more, way more pain to go. Oh, sorry, there's way more pain to come. Sue, progress! Sue uses a giant handmade spatula to pry Gallus off the wall. Gallus, this is the first livable planet we've found in weeks. Everything has to go perfectly. Bo, does this planet have any giant parasitic worms that like last time? Gallus, nope, no life forms whatsoever. It will be our first, it will be our perfect home. That's why we gotta practice our landing. Sue, my turn. Gallus, according to our astronaut's guide, we're gonna hit G-force upon landing. So we gotta go faster. Gallus holds up a comic book entitled The Adventures of Space Goof. Bo goes, what happened to the real astronaut's guide? Eh, Sue ate it. Sue in her defensively. Well, if you leave something on my sandwich table, it's going in the sandwich. Bo, so how are you going to land the ship once we get to the new planet you found? Sue, maybe when I ate the book, I gained its knowledge. Gallus jumps on Sue's head and rubs it like a crystal ball. Gallus, what do you see, Sue? Sue goes, I see a ship approaching landing and a rooster. He's laughing uncontrollably because he's a tickly goose. And she pulls him off and starts tickling Gallus on the ground. Gallus starts laughing, knock it off. I'm, I'm not a tickly goose. I'm serious astronaut. I'm a serious astro rooster. And Bo goes, I'm a tickly goose. Bo runs over and slams Gallus and Sue. Gallus, Bo runs over and slams into Gallus and Sue. They fly through the wall, creating a hole, and they enter the engine room. Cut. So that's the end of sequence two. I want to um, do sequence endings when they go to do new locations of the script. So my cue is when they go into a new area of the room. That's when we're going to break it up. Now, if it's a long sequence, I might break it up into uh, a long area where it's just in one location. I might break it up in a couple of sequences there. But this is enough of one sequence to kind of get a good feel for. Um, we start with the title. We, we, that's one sequence in itself. So, and then we go in and we, uh, I'm going to put this back. I'm going to put this right here so we can, I can just have it in place. Um, so, you know, sequences can be broken up however you choose to break them up, but typically you want to break them up when it's a, a different thought or a different part of uh, the storytelling structure. So, for instance, the title is one contained, self-contained sequence. Uh, the interior um, test room is another sequence that is about two, uh, two pages long. And then we go into the engine room. Now, once it goes into the engine room, then I'm just going to, um, I'm going to cut back into that as one sequence. Now in that engine room, those pages that I haven't read yet, that will take, they'll go walk, they'll walk back into the test room, but that'll be a smaller sequence that I'll keep together even if they go back and forth between each room and then so forth and so on. So as I'm doing this, I'm figuring out where I can make my breaks and how I can number them. So it's important to, um, when you do things like this and I'll just, I'm going to move this back over to the top. When you, uh, break down a sequence, um, naming convention is always a good idea. So arc, is is uh is the name right here? Whoop! Why am I on? Oh, 
I'm on the wrong layer, that's why. Let's get rid of this. So I'm just gonna show you a little understanding of naming sequences. So everything you do, you should keep in order. Um, how you develop your, your character designs, how you develop your visual developments uh, of prop designs. Keep them in a certain naming convention. So for storyboarding, you know, it's, it's typically, it's like you have the name of the show, arc, which is an easy one. And then I can go episode, uh, it, it could be EP01 underscore sequence underscore 001 and so forth. You know, that could be two, three, four. And then as you, when you do a final output, it's always nice to name uh, your, your panels in some sort of sequential order like this so that you have, when it goes into editing, all this is, all of this, especially with the boards, is all about tracking and editing and doing revisions when it goes into, uh, into the edit process because you've got to keep track of all of those panels and you have to create a naming convention that's going to work effectively so that let's say I have this and I go all the way up to, you know, 900, you know, 900 panels or uh, actually that would be sequence one. And then we would go underscore zero, zero, zero. So that would be your, your number count for your, uh, your panels. How many panels, not, not how many shots, but how many panels. So when I do like export a JPEG sequence or if I export a PSD sequence, I'm gonna name it like this so that when I go into editing, everything will be in a nice sequential order. I'll have its own identity with what, what sequence it is. Um, but also when you go in, let's say you have 900 panels, it took not shots, but panels. It took 900 panels to create that one sequence then let's say 250 needs to get revised. Well, I already have an original drawing named 250 um, when it's in editorial. So if I want to replace that with something else, I can't replace it with the same number because it'll be confusing. And you wanna save all of the drawings, all the iterations that you have in case you wanna go back and use them again. So every new iteration has to have a new thumbprint, a new identity, a new naming convention. So it's important when you guys do these sequences and boarding them to really keep them as organized as you possibly can. We don't, people don't really talk about this a whole lot. You just sort of like, you know, cast, you know, cast caution to the wind because if you're on it, if you're on a scene or you're on a show, the, the production manager is going to tell you how you need to name it. And then, you send it off and it's done and you walk away and you do something else. But if you're doing your own production, oh, do I hear, do I hear soda pop, soda water, um, then it's important for you to keep yourself as organized as possible. I've talked about this before um, in terms of organization, you know, creating your shot list of, of designs, you know, how many prop designs you need, you, you need based on the script how many characters there are in the script, um, how many layouts or, or complexity shots are there in your script. You have to, um, since it's myself right now, we would have one person or two, several people designated to organizing all of those things. We might have a production manager for layout. We might have a production manager that will production manager that oversees layout and prop designs and character designs. Then we might, and then we'll have another production manager that oversees story. And then we'll have another production manager that oversees animation and then backgrounds. And then we ha we'll have an art director. So there's a lot of, as you build a team right now, it's just me and myself and I, but as you build a team of people to do this sort of work, you're, you're having, you, you have to really understand the whole process of how a pipeline for production is created from pre-production to production. And um, that's why I'm sharing all this information to you guys. So hopefully this all makes sense. So let's get out of that. Um, so, any questions so far?
from people? Nobody's nobody's asking questions. Nope. Have you scrolled up? See, where you you read everything? You're not you're not behind anything. Wow, you're doing great, dude. Good job. Holy cow. All right, so back to uh, drawing actual drawing. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna I'm gonna build a couple of. Uh, Simple little squares for my thumbnails. Oh, I hear a dog go outside. We're gonna grab this, copy the brush. So what I'm doing here is I'm just Putting some panels in here. Copy the brush. Oh, too big. Let's scale it down a little bit. There you go. Wanted to do uh, more panels on this on these than what I was doing previously. So we're gonna do. Question. Yep, questions. I have answers. Someone said unrelated, but what do you think about ribbed animations as related to traditional animations? How limited am I? Um, you know. Coffee's good. I mean, hold that thought. I have something stuck in my tooth. Mm. Did it fall out? I think so. Oh, there's a seed. Okay. So, um, I'm. You know, I I like all animation. I think all of it has a place. You know, I'm I'm a traditionalist, so I'm. I'm teaching you the concepts of traditional keyframe animation because I think there's value in understanding keyframe. I, I feel like keyframe animation would be the same as like going, learning traditional filmmaking, uh, camera work. Um, we have all this digital technology that has been built on the traditional foundation of which we, we started with, where, where I started. And it's all based on making things more efficient and useful for the artist as a tool, but it's really important to understand the root of where it all came from. So with keyframe animation, I think it's always important to have that, that skill set in mind because I think it's just gonna help you become a better animator when you go into things where you have things rigged or you have um, Toon Boom Harmony where you have uh, characters that are, you know, you can put bone structure in it so you can move it around and manipulate it. You still have to have a good sense of timing and rhythm and pacing to your, your, your animation when you do it. So it's always, but for me, I feel like the way to learn it fundamentally is through the idea of actually drawing, uh, actually keyframe animating and really pushing things on your, for yourself to get your brain kind of get that brain exercise going to help you along the way. Yes. So uh, a lot of times uh, when you rename something, um, it's whatever you like it to be. Um, a lot of times they might do, let's say, I'm going to make sure I'm on the right. I'm going to stay in here. I'm going to lock that one, stay on the bottom one. So um, if it's frame 250, uh, they might be 250 uh, A. It might be 250 AA. You know, or it might be 250 AB. Now, hopefully, you don't make too many iterations to that. Um, if you do a rewrite, then you're you're kind of going in and you're making a whole new set of boards, and so a whole new sequence occurs, and then you're just going to be starting from scratch again. Um, but if you're just iterating the same sequence, 
um, hopefully you won't be going more than two or three iterations anyways. So having a 250 to 2A to 2AA to 2AB um, is a way of, of stamping, um, putting a mark, however you choose to do it. Yes? You're writing a comic book script? Um, understand story. That's really what it comes down to. I mean, the, you know, everyone has, you know, there's, there's, there's tropes and different things that you guys do when it comes to, to graphic novels. No, I've, I've read a couple. I'm not a huge graphic novel writer, uh, reader, per se. I listen to a lot on tape. Um, I, I do have books that I read um, and stories. Um, but one of the things that I found through all of those things, fundamentally, they all have a s similar story structure. Um, you have a hero's journey. You have an archetype where the character is, uh, you know, broken and then um, is having to go through this this investigation and through this this trying of, of discovery. Uh, they're learning about themselves. All of these things that you're writing about are important. Um, Really, there's so many different genres of, of comic books nowadays. You don't have to uh, be the traditional um, like X-Men or Marvel. You can, there's so many offsets of comic books out there that are interesting. That um, I have a great comic book um, from a French comic from the uh, mid-90s uh, of Peter Pan. And it's all in French, but the artwork is amazingly beautiful. And it tells us really kind of like, dystopian story about Tinkerbell and Peter Pan. Um, I would say learn story the best you can, like learn traditional storytelling. You know, there is Western storytelling where you have more of that linear, like hero's journey. And then there's also more, you can go more outside the box. I mean, you don't necessarily have to stay within the traditional realms. I think as long as you make it engaging, for your audience and you know who your audience is and you know the type of thing that you want to tell, um, then focus on writing in that style or that, that genre or that demographic and, and keep practicing at it. It's just like sketching. It's just like anything else. The more you do, the better you get. Um, you know, some people spend their entire career just doing sci-fi writing. Some people do love novels. Some people do um, documentary type um, writing autobiographical or, you know, some people do f just pure, um, fantasy fiction. Some people do, uh, I, I don't know. What are some of the books that you like that are, you read, you read a lot actually. What was your, what was one of your favorite books as a, uh, yeah. Do you have any comic books favorites? Cause he likes anime. No, you don't have any? Well, bottom line is, I think for script writing, uh, understand story structure. Um, with comic books, I would treat the comic book kind of like a script. Um, in, in a lot of ways, it's similarities to a script. Um, and if I was, I'm working on my first, I have been working on my first graphic novel, which is this, this uh, uh, character, Ota, who is this uh, blind, uh, it's sort of, um, I would say, a, uh, a mixture of uh, folklore, of Native American folklore mixed with uh, Nordic folklore. Uh, it's uh, built in, it's set in sort of a Pacific, uh, dystopian uh, Pacific Northwest. And it's really about this blind octopus who can live on land, uh, who is basically the... He is our last hope uh, to the world to bring back the balance of good over evil. He is, uh, unfortunately, he is, <laughs> unfortunately, because he's in this discovery zone right now of figuring out what his purpose in this world is because he has been given these special powers. Um, but as a result of getting these powers, he's gone blind. So he can't see, but he is... Uh, it was inspired off of this this graph this uh, cult classic um, called Atuichi, which is a Japanese uh, film about a blind uh, 
samurai. And this octopus, because I like octopus, is, is one of those, uh, is sort of loosely based off of that concept. Um, he has powers, he can live out of, off the land, um, and he fights injustice. And um, he's not perfect by any stretch of the means, but he is, he is uh, been given powers to him that he did not want to have uh, or did not request to have. They were just sort of given to him out of uh, necessity, and uh, which is the story that I've been writing for the first episode. I'm treating each, for my graphic novel, I'm treating each uh, comic book as an episode. So um, I'm, I'm calling them each episode one, episode two, and that's and I, I notice other people do that, so I kind of treated it that way. I've looked at other books that are similar to kind of help me along the way to figure out what my my ideas uh, to help figure out my ideas a little bit better. But this would be the character. Um, I'm trying to draw him fast so you can you know, get a get a good idea of of who he is. I really uh, love the whole series of Atoichi, which is there's 25 feature films made of it. Um, they get a little ridiculous uh, towards the end, but um, it's really an interesting um, series that not a whole lot of people know about. I mean, uh, people do know about it, but it's definitely a, a, a specific genre that isn't for everybody. Yes. Okay. With the, does the entire sequence get the new A stamp to every panel, or does he only get assigned to the changes panel? It only gets assigned to the changes panel. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, just think of at once you've assigned a number to your panel, that stays with that particular panel forever for that sequence. Um, it doesn't change. So when you make a change, you have to give a whole new version uh, so it doesn't get confused and it's all about um, conforming and getting things ready for editorial and making sure that um, you don't get repeat drawings or you lose drawings by accident because you've named it the same thing. So that's also very important to kind of keep that in mind when you're doing uh, your boards. And then someone asked, how do you focus on so many projects at once? My ad Um, well, uh, Matteo can tell you that um, I'm not the easiest person to get along with at times uh, because I've got so many things going on in my head and I'm working on multiple projects. Um, it's good to get away from your desk and prioritize. I'm going to actually do a, um, a back to basics tutorial on that sort of subject on how to keep yourself from going crazy. Uh, when you have multiple ideas and multiple projects that you want to work on um, because it, it's hard. I am working on, you know, doing this live stream and branding sketch to animate is huge full-time thing that is slowly starting to, starting to earn an income. Not very much, like little, little, little bit, but it takes time to build and, and plant the seed and grow. But on top of that, I also have original projects like this show Arc uh, that I'm doing. And I haven't even drawn a single drawing of Arc yet today because I have been asked a lot of questions and um, I'm sharing with you multiple things that I'm doing. So it's, it's hard to navigate sometimes through all of the things that I want to do. And one of the things that I finally say is um, it's very easy to overwhelm yourself with thinking about it that you end up not doing anything at all. So the big suggestion I have is at some point stop thinking about it and just write a list down, prioritize it and just do it. And I tell you, like I talked about doing live streams for like a year before I actually started doing it. And then I started in January and I've been consistently doing it every week and it's been getting better and better and I'm accomplishing uh, like ARC. I've had ARC for several years and I said, hey, I got to get art going. 
um, my writing partners were like, we got to get art going so we can try to sell it. And um, now we're doing it. You know, it's taking a while and it's like chipping away little by little, but I'm incorporating it into my day to day routine so that I'm, I'm, I'm taking little baby steps each and every step of the way. And I'm not worried about getting to the end. I'm just worried about focused on the present moment and how I can get what I needed to get done for that moment. And if I don't, I also allow myself to be forgiven. I don't, I don't uh, beat myself up too bad if I don't get something done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I need one more. Uh, this is, that is exactly what happens to me. I overthink everything. Yes, and most, most people do. Um, it's not uncommon. You're not, you're not in an uncommon place um, for that. Um, and so I'm just letting you know that your, your, your voice is heard. I, I totally validate you. And it's completely relevant, um, you know, I, for what you're going through. It's, it's, it's so many people go through it. And I can guarantee you everyone that's out here listening to this right now uh, has gone through it at least one point in their, in their life, if not in their daily life. Um, I'm doing a quick lasso here. Because I actually like this sketch. This is, this is Ota, my graphic novel that I want to bring to the world one day. Um, I think this would be a really cool project. Um, uh, he has a great origin story to it. It's, it's my own original kind of concept. And I really enjoy um, figuring out the story behind him. Um, it's been a it's been a really cool process of developing this. Are you okay over there? Just coughing. That's oh, okay. You can cough. You got tested for COVID and you're negative. So yay for that. Um, I hope everyone's staying safe out there. By the way, for, through this whole COVID situation that we're all we're all in it together. Where none of us are are. Um, immune to what's happening to the world and what we're going through. So, yes. Someone said, do you know that we can't hear the questions? So it would be great if you could repeat them before answering. Each. Oh, okay. Oh, you can. You have to talk louder. Sorry. Okay. That's, that's okay. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. I will, um, I will repeat the question. Someone said, Oda looks cool. Oh, thank you. Thank you for uh, liking Ota. Um, yes. So the, the question was before about, you know, getting, not getting things done, uh, because you have so many projects, how do you prioritize? And, you know, if you guys want, I will, I will put together some kind of, um, package or a back to basics tutorial about that. Um, there's a lot of things like exercise. Um, you know, I am lacking in that too. I, I am uh, used to be very much into exercise all the time. And because of the multiple projects that I have going on, I forget to do exercises. Or I sit there to, at my desk too long and my feet start to hurt. <laughs> my joints start to hurt because I haven't, I haven't moved around enough. So, you know, it's important to kind of get out and make sure that you be active, uh, mentally, physically, um, because you will drive yourself nuts and you'll, you'll, it's not good for your body. It's not good for the soul. What do you do? And so Mateo, uh, is, you know, cautiously playing soccer. Um, uh, we've all been kind of concerned about COVID and, um, but one of the things that's affecting the worst is, is kids because not just, it's the idea of the mental stability. You know, kids need to be around other friends. Adults need to be around other friends. And uh, because of this happening, not everyone is getting, uh, is able to do that. And it's, it's, it's creating a lot of, um, you know, depression uh, among kids and adults. Um, that's why I, th I think it's nice to even have you know, being able to do what I'm doing now to kind of talk with you guys and share and kind of get out of the norm that you're doing right now so you can sit here and watch me draw or ask me questions. And um, um, and it helps me too, because trust me, it's like I need, I, you know, I don't, I'm here 24 seven 
it seems like half the time that I'm, I'm mostly at my desk working and uh, I need a break from it as much as I can. What's someone said speak loud. Someone said, Yes, please. My anxiety is so high all the time, and I think your perspective, perspective would help. Okay, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to put something at listen. You know, what, what can I say about anxiety? Um, allow the anxiety to exist because it's, it's a part of who you are, but you, you also have to um, try to l figure out ways. When anxiety starts to set in, figure out ways to, to kind of distract you from it. Um, sometimes you can't and, you, and it becomes incapacitating and you, you kind of have to let it run its course. But know that you're not alone. I think, I think just knowing that you're not alone is, is somewhat of a relief. It's not like you want to mire with other people in your, in your sorrows or your depression, but understanding that um, even the people that typically don't fall falter because they're, you know, strong and, uh, they don't typically seem to bother them. They still have issues. Um, it's, it's hard. It's so difficult out there, but you know, you, it's, it's important to, if you have friends that you can zoom friend with or Skype with, um, you know, we, we do have friends that we know are, are safe. Um, that we spend time with we have a you know fortunately for us we have a backyard and we have space um, so we're not stuck in the city in an urban environment where some people can't get out um, as, uh, as much um, for me I don't have uh, to worry about that because I, I own a home and I have a nice backyard and so that's afforded me to have uh, a chance if I need to get out of the house I can um, some people don't have that but I'm always here, guys. If you ever need to, uh, as a as a friend, as a fellow artist, um, you know, I'm here to kind of uh, empathize and sympathize and uh, with you guys through this. Someone asked, when you are a student, do you recommend to focus on one skill, drawing, writing, cinematography at a time, or can you start creating stories even if it's not so good? Um, I say start stories even if it's not so good. Um, the only way you're going to get better is by actually doing it. It's, it's you know, learn. I, I find that um, I'm so impressed with people. Even if they don't, even if they, their project may not have come out that well, the fact that, you know, we can easily criticize someone else's work and go, oh, that, that, that's, look, that's crappy. But did you do something? The fact that they even did it is a testament to the fact that they followed through on something and they accomplished something. Now, we can judge whether it's bad or not, but the point is is that they got it done. And the more you do one of the, the more you do it, the, the more you're going to learn from your experience and hopefully improve from that. And after a while, it's going to get better and better and better and better and you're going to see the improvement. So I say learn it all like I my brain works in a way that I need to learn everything. I need, I need to know, you know, uh, you know, why is, why is the sky blue to, to, you know, what's out there beyond our galaxy to, you know, uh, how to become a better story artist, how to become a better cinematographer. There's a couple more questions. Um, someone said, are you keeping in mind the straight curve to relation, the straight to curve relationship while you're just designing your characters? Um, yeah, I'm thinking of a lot of different things. Um, everything has structure to it. Even this, this, uh, this octopus, um, has structure to it, you know, um, to, you know, in our, you know, things without, um, uh, bone structure still has structure. It has a, has a volume, it has mass and, and masses, whether it's, it's a fire or whether it's uh, smoke, there, it's, it has mass, whether the particles are, are far apart or really condensed together, uh, whether they're rigid or whether they're flexible, they still have structure to it or, or that sense of structure. Um, so I'm always thinking of that. If I was to go in here and, uh, you know, create the shape language or the structure for this, you know, I thought about um, my, my, my structure would be like so. I would think small small head right here 
with a, like a balloon um, head attached to it. And everything is attached to this ball, if you will. And then it kind of runs from that. So that's where I get my eyes and I get my no, my, uh, my eyes. And then structure wise, um, the one thing that every octopus has is a beak underneath. So it has one, one hard shell. So I kind of treat that as sort of the structure, angular structure right there is like maybe his beak is under here. Yes. Um, it, it, it's, I go through the same exact thing that you're going through. It's, it's hard not to, it's, it's, you just got to be diligent about being consistent. Like I, I probably go through, especially with model sheets, like 10 to 20 iterations over and over again. Cause I draw it then I draw it again. Then I draw it again. Then I put it down. Then I step away and I look at it and go, Oh man, that the angle of the eye was wrong or the, the head, the perspective was weird. And then I go back and I do it again and I do it again and I step away and I look back at it until I'm finally like, okay, I'm happy with this. Let's move on. Do you draw an octopus relentlessly and learn the anatomy before creating characters or simultaneously? Um, simultaneously. First you observe, right? You don't know how to draw an octopus if you've never seen one. So if you've never seen an octopus and someone says, draw an octopus, how would you know how to draw it? So you have to look at something, observe something to, in order to take and, you know, put it into your brain and take a mental picture of it. Then you start drawing it. Then as you draw it, you're, you're, you're trying to figure out form. And then I start researching. That's when I start researching structure, the bones, the anatomy of it. Um, the different poses that it can do, how far it can stretch, how far it can squeeze. And, and I start reading about the octopus and, 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 or any animal for that matter. And then, then as, I, as I evolve, my drawing evolves. As I become more knowledgeable about the character and I keep drawing it over and over again, my design starts to emerge out of that. Uh, hold hold on one second here. I guess I just want to save this real quick. Storyboards, new folder, sequence two. Say create. All right, I have that in there. I'm gonna hide this guy in here. So basically, what I was trying to tell you before, guys, is that this this is how I would approach uh, figuring out my shape language for my characters, um, for the octopus to kind of give it some sort of, uh, form of structure. So it would be more like an umbrella that opens up and it all attaches into, um, a circle. Circle. And there's a, they have their little breathing apparatus right here where they push water in and out through this. I forget what they call it. But right here, I can, I can draw just like this and figure out this is a, a cone shape that can stretch. But this is essentially how I've, I've built and designed my... Uh, Ota character based on my discovery of and w just visualize and observing um, and watching videos of octopus. Sorry. Yes. I remember someone asked, can you go over the standard annotations for each panel? Do you add dialogue and music? Okay, so let me let me go through that real quick. Uh, I'm gonna.
hide this. Uh, I'm going to lock these just so I have it. And then I'm going to uh, see hide these guys. I need this one. We're going to go, we're going to start breaking down. I'm going to talk about that as I'm starting the storyboard uh, sequence too. So uh, ask me the question one more time. Can you go over the standard annotations for each panel? Do you add dialogue or music? Uh, the annotation for each panel. Are you referring to uh, when you, let's see, when you, uh, let me hide this. When you talk about that, are you referring to, I'll put it right there. Um, on a storyboard panel, uh, you would have your, your uh, dialogue And then you have your action, uh, or actually, sometimes it's action and uh, notes. And then you would have at the top, you would have your field guide. This would be where you would draw. What did they say? They said any writing you would. The same person who said who asked the question said any writing you would include besides the drawing. Oh, um, yeah. So, so when it comes to music, no. When it comes to uh, thumbnails, uh, like drawing something like this right here, uh, I might go in and I might go. Um, this is a shot. Now, in my script, I have Gal Sue. Uh, using the spatula to kind of peel Gallus off the wall. But in this case, I decided to make Bo doing it instead, um, which I wanted it just for this beat board, this moment. I just wanted to do just something really quick. And when I go into the boards, I'm going to have, I'm going to restage this to where uh, Gallus or Bo is still in the testing room and Sue is peeling him off the wall or Sue is peeling Gallus off the wall. When he's doing that so what i would do is i would go um, if this is sort of a thumbnail or a quick board underneath um, let's say i'll draw this i'll draw what you see here over here and um, in this case uh, let's say I'll, I'll get it down to maybe this section right here all right Let's say this is, got it. Let's say this is the room. Uh, Gallus has been, he smashes up against the wall. Maybe he, uh, you see him smash up against the wall like so. Smashes up against the wall, flat. You know, maybe it, he he flies in, and he, you have a smash. And I'm doing this as a quick thumbnail. And uh, maybe the previous panel, I'll I'll go, uh, Gallus, and underneath in my thumbnails, I will write notes. I will write uh, for action. Action note. Right, and typically I'm just doing this for your sake. Uh, action note: I would just write it down and say, uh, "Gallus flies in 
left screen and slams into wall and then flattens like a pancake. You were mumbling over there. Sorry. You gotta, you gotta talk louder. Um, someone asked if you could go over what you were explaining earlier. You said it was very interesting. Uh, what was that thing that I was explaining earlier that was very interesting? Uh, let me let me get a couple more of these boards uh, so I can feel like I accomplished at least a couple of boards of uh, uh, sequence two, like pancake. So, um, and I'm doing this throughout this whole thing. Now, this is, since this is my thumbnail phase of working on uh, sequence two of arc, um, I usually like to do a quick tone level as well. So I'll go in and I'll do a tone. Let's say this entire room is dark in this. And I'll have a little slam. What I like to do is just go in and quickly block out just quick tones. And I'm not, and I've said this a thousand times before, I'm not worried. I'm worried about getting staging and the overall camera angle that I want to get in my thumbnails at this point. I'm not going overly detailed with anything uh, because I don't want to waste too much time. I want to just jump in and get things out as they progress. Um, but it's important to note that when you're doing this, it's, this is when you're keeping in mind camera. Um, you're, you're focusing on what's my camera direction? Um, how am I leading the audience's eye through these thumbnails? Um, and it gives you a quick blueprint as to whether it's working or not working. So, you know, we can say, I'll do a little arrow for this, that, um, you know, he flies in and slams against the wall. Uh, maybe in the previous, previous panel, uh, you know, he's, uh, maybe I'll do where it's like he's he's flying past camera. Maybe his, his direction is this way, then this way, and then it ends up uh, coming in more like this. So this is all one big shot where um, we see him flying against, he flies off of the, uh, the chair See Gallus maybe I'm wonder if Gallus should have a test uh, helmet on or maybe he doesn't at all and he comes flying through the air and this is sort of an action I'm treating this this panel like one one big pan going across with, uh, you know, Sue, Sue's off in a, off in a background. And she's, she was holding the rope. Maybe the rope snapped. And he, 
he's flying through the air. Like so. Can you see that? Mateo, can you see one of the... Do you have any questions, Mateo? As, uh, as I'm doing this, do you... Or are you just... You're used to seeing this. You're like, eh, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> you're like, eh. Eh. Uh, this is another question. Or okay. Someone said, when Naveen Kaur Hunting Gun said... <clears throat> It would be nice if you had two other characters sitting and the chicken flying past them. They would have com confused looks on their faces. Yes, it would, but that would be telling a completely different story than what I'm telling here. Um, and there'll be more time for that later on when we introduce our second and third character. Um, but yes, it... it that's but that that's right there. Those are cool ideas, but they tell different stories. So what we, what what that is when I tell you guys, get out there and let's see some of your own stories. Let's see you guys getting inspired to start developing your own your own your own pilot, your own short film, uh, short story. You know, this, the whole idea for me is is showing you guys like if I can do this, you guys can do this. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking just to talk for the sake of talking. I'm talking because I want to teach and learn, uh, have people get inspired and learn something from this experience that I'm having right now. Um, so basically, flying through the camera, you know, big, and then he's he eventually slams. Maybe he, maybe we see it pan a little bit like this and stops, and he goes past camera, and then we cut, and we see him kind of coming in. Uh, I've never changed the nib on my stylus. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I've never really changed the nib on my stylus. I think I maybe wait. I'm, I'm, I think I maybe might have changed it once. Uh, how long have I had this? Yeah. Mm, a couple of years, two years. This this nib a year at least a year. Let's put it, let's make it safe and say at least a year. I've had that. So, you know, he's, he's slamming in. And I'm just going to draw. Just to get the shapes out there. So they pop out a little bit better. And you can see how I'm, I'm sort of drawing this concept where she's in the background, he's flying through the air. That sounded like you, you farted over there. No, it's the iPad case. Oh my God, it's the iPad case. Don't say fart on, you tooted. No, he didn't toot. My eye, my eye. <laughs> No, let's stop it, Travis. Goofball. Mr. Fidgety over there. Uh, what other, do you have any other questions? No. Other than somebody said, ask, uh, can you go back to what you were talking about before it was interesting? What was the interesting one? I. Uh, somebody said, can you go back and talk about what you were talking about before that was, seemed interesting? And I don't know what that was. I don't think they said it yet. No, you said it earlier. No. Oh, okay. Got it. That's, they just said, I think. That's awesome. How can you draw perspectives, body position, facial expressions so fast, so well? Um, practice. Oh. Practice, practice, practice. So, you know, it's it's essentially... Uh, zooming past camera, uh, I'm going to go into, let's see, wide, um, wide and covering, strapped into a car seat, Bo takes note intensely, rope is stressed, it snaps, um, which makes him fly through the air, um, actually I should have in this, I need to make a mental note that this 
should show a seat lying in the air. Yes, what were you going to say? They answered what you were talking about earlier. They asked about the panel answer. Oh, okay. So, so sequence two, this is uh, shot one. All right, shot one right here. Let's say this is shot one. And shot one would be door slides over to reeling. Uh, let's see here. No, that's not it. Um, extreme close-up of Gallus wearing a makeshift helmet and he's strapped into what appears to be a cockpit. So shot one uh, would be here. And I would have... Uh, let's see, you know, I don't know what that would be. This is some makeshift helmet. And It's gonna, he's, he's all in serious mode, ready to, to plunge into G-force. Uh, and he's strapped in. He's, got, he's strapped into a seat. Say so he's strapped in. Again, I'm keeping this loosey goosey. The idea is getting the attitude across. Now I'll change this as I go into my. This, now I consider these thumbnails, so these are just quick shot ideas of what I want to have happen. So it straps. My stomach just growled. What's your stomach? That was my stomach. All right. Nope, that was my stomach. All right. So we got him. I'll zoom in so you guys can see this. This would be shot one. And Shot one is, and I'll just write a quick note to myself, that shot one is, where are you? Uh, extreme close up, extreme close up. Now extreme close up would be more like, maybe like this.
and he's wearing a helmet. So that would be uh, kind of an extreme close-up right there. That would be more of an extreme close-up. If you were to be extreme close-up would be more like that. This is a close-up, but I wanted to also, I might g go in and um, just make sure I put this on a separate layer. Um, in my thumbnails, this is why I do thumbnails. I can go and say, you know what, that's not close enough. Maybe I need to, uh, maybe I need to make it closer. Maybe this, I can do this type of extreme close up. Maybe I can go in this tight. Uh, enough to show the helmet and then he's strapped into something. Um, but this would be really extreme close up, which is, which is right here, uh, where I just put the star. Yes. Sean from Brush Mechanic asks, do you use the darker tones for the foreground specifically, or do you use the tone to separate elements in general? Um, I, I use tone to separate elements, whether the, the layout is, is a, a darker tone, and then I just make the character white, or um, in this case, um, I'm trying to get a mood across, so I'm, I'm using different gradients for, for the thumbnail. Um, where I'm darkening the character and then kind of, if it's a, a, just a color card in the background, I drop the color, you know, drop that back. I might not even put any color in the layout itself. I'll just put color in, in the character to kind of have the character pop out and give it form. So it's, it depends on shot to shot and how I'm, how I'm thinking about it, where I want to go with it. Like, you know, something like this where you see Sue in the background. Uh, Sue nose right there the line of, you know the, line, the snap the line had snapped and broke uh, along with the chair I gotta add the chair in here Naveen, Naveen 510 uh, asks why do you decide to draw him a little as a top view why did I decide to draw him what a little as a top Camera direction, I'm trying to set up that this room is big. So uh, in terms of camera mapping, uh, the room is basically like a big cylinder room. Or maybe, you know, we can treat it more like a round. You know, this is uh, inside of it. If there, if she's, you know, standing... If she's standing right here, uh, swinging Gallus around, Gallus would be here as he's going around in a circle. And there's a test room uh, window, which is on the other on the other side. And so knowing this, I, he's going to eventually flatten like a pancake right, right somewhere up here, uh, away from the opposite side of where the window is. And so he's going to be slightly up higher. So I want to lead the camera up to show that he's going up high away from her and then, and then cut to an action where it's going past camera left to right and then cut to and you see him coming in and smashing. That I want to fly almost with with him to kind of feel that impact as we as we go uh, into the final shot like that. So that that was my reasoning behind doing that. It's how I'm deciding to lead the camera's eye or lead the audience through this this adventure that we're going in. Um, let's see here. This would be shot two. 
And then it's getting late for me. I'm gonna have to call it call it soon. Uh, let's see here. Shot zero zero. Uh, let's call it shot zero two. Actually zero two. We'll call this shot zero zero one. Zero zero one. So I'm just using this shot as a representative of uh, that one scene. And then we go, Gallus says, let's, let's uh, you know, he says, ready, set, let's do this. Maybe it's, uh, uh, it's smash cuts in. Maybe I do a, a cut in, might be more interesting. Maybe he, he, we go, let's do this. Like that. And then he, then he does his line. Maybe it goes into that. So this would be one shot that goes, vroom, let's do this. And then oh. let's do this. Rush Mechanic said, those master layout panels help make the beat boards make so much sense. Oh yeah, they, they, and it's all part of that process. I, and hopefully uh, you're applying that to your own stuff as well, Brush Mechanic. Um, Let's see here. I am going extreme close up. Is wearing makeshift helmet. Ready? Let's do this. Gallus starts spinning through the air. Um, maybe you see him uh, getting yanked out of uh, sheen. Uh, let's do this. And then we don't see where it's coming from. Maybe we see um, a loose rope like so. And it's strapped to the front of this. Since it's a futuristic space, maybe it's, uh, it's on the ground like so, and he's strapped in. Square. Got his feet right here. Uh, we've got maybe way off in the, in the distance. We see the test room. Where we see Bo is watching with his meter. He's got his uh, meter in one hand and a notepad in the other. And this is going off, and uh, we're going to call this shot uh, zero 01. So this would be shot zero zero 002, and this would be panel zero 01. That represents panel. And so I might take three or four pa panels to, to play out the action for this shot. So uh, I'm just going to do tone real quick. We're in tone layer, so, so you can block this out and see how I have it. Naveen 110 said, funny way to run a space simulation. <laughs> we, well, good. I'm glad. That's, we're supposed to make these guys funny, humorous. It's animation. Uh... 
So basically, he's sitting in his, his uh, seat, and since I've already drawn these characters out of order since I was preemptively showing you guys something, uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to number this one correctly. This is going to be shot. Zero, zero, two, zero, two. So it's, so I have my, even though I'm not in sequential order with the boxes, I'm going to be in order with how I number it. So I know which, what shot goes with what part of the page. And I'm constantly looking at the page. Typically I'll draw thumbnails on my paper to and indicate and draw arrows where things are going to go. Um, but I can do that just through here digitally. So then what I would do in this, this is this would be the fun part. I'm gonna do shot zero zero two zero uh, three. So you'll see what's gonna happen. So you get you get line goes taut. The line gets taut. Uh, he spins around. When the camera changes the a different goes goes to a different camera angle, then that's a new shot. That's when you know to change it. A shot represents a camera, a cut, a new camera angle, a camera view. And every time that there's a new camera view, you create a new shot. Line 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 tightens. Again, you have the same, same as up here. Uh, what I can do here is just basically copy the brush. Uh, put it right there. He spins around and then uh, gets yanked. And you said, I hope it's okay for me to ask these questions. Storyboarding is not my area. Oh, you're, you're, this is why I have this, this channel. This is why I do these live streams. I want people to, to, to learn. And you can ask as many questions as you want. So as you can see, I'm having him come towards camera. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. I'm having him come towards camera because he's being he's being yanked and he's shooting uh, past camera. And he might do one more where he's swinging around. And it does a wipe. Like so. And that would be shot zero. This would be shot zero, zero, two, zero, four. Uh, comes into camera and I'm 
We'll just do a quick tone of that so you can kind of see all that. And then really big into camera. And see how simple and loose I have it. It's enough to indicate what I need to have for my, my boards. Well, it gets the point across. Yes. Uh, I'm going to have him bust out of the, the, that's, that's the question. I'm not, I'm not sure if I want it, to have him break out. Like he breaks out and she still has the seat and he just, his, his seatbelt breaks and he goes flying or do I have him smash, um, into the shot with the seat still on it. So that's, that's the question. Like I, I'm trying to figure out like all I would have to do if that's the case is if I go here, um, the alt would be uh, basically him smashing. Uh, see the alt. And then I would just add it to all of these panels in shot zero uh, in this last shot where he flies through the camera and he breaks, he breaks away. Um, I would just... Alt, add the seat, Like so. All right. Just a quick alt. Maybe he has a seat the whole time. Maybe he has a seat the whole time and he just smashes up against the wall. So I'll just say alt. Maybe have him still in car seat. Um, he says the spatula may read better without the seat. Flat feathers is pretty funny. Yeah. Um, the the other thing is like he he can break away if she's swinging. If, if she's swinging, uh, this is what I wanted to do was have her uh, cut to him swinging around. And as he swings around, cut to our... Yes. Uh, Naveen 510 says that they agree without the seat is funnier. Oh, thank you. I'm glad somebody agrees. Um, but it's good to explore those options. So basically as he spins around, I would have then cut to, uh, a, a fun shot of, of our pig. Also. Spinning around
going in a circle, spinning around, spinning around. And then you maybe see Actually, probably needs to do it on the side. Uh, maybe I need to attach it this the rope here instead. I'm thinking of how this mechanically would work um, because he needs to be spinning as if he's flying in a, in a side view. So maybe it would be funnier to have him. The, the, the seat is more like on a side view. See, this is where I haven't really thought this out yet. Um, Naveen1210 asks, what are the little arrows called? Action arrows. I'm just action, just for, you know, where the action is. is They're my own little mental notes to kind of, the, the to show that she's spinning around in a circle and you, you're going to see him spinning around as she spins around. Spins Gallus. And then maybe uh, we have our, our guy here, Bo, watching her, right? And as he's passing, he's as you know, we see her spin him around. We start with him spinning, and I think it might be better to have the the strap be on the side, hooked to the side of the seat. That way, he's going he's going head first around and around, as opposed to um, it might be funny. It could be funny this way too, uh, where he's just pushed up against the seat and he's going around and around which is fine. Um, and then when it breaks, it could just spin. I could have all kinds of funny little spins or something happening going through the air to make it hilarious uh, rather than what I have here. Um, you know, he could be, he could be spinning. And yeah, I'll just put it in a, in a funny way. Um, again, these are all mental, these are all thumbnails that are here for, for my initial thought and ideas before I go into my rough boards. So she's there. And what would be cool is that if I, oh, not that one. Oh, I gotta unlock it. Lock it back again. If I take, as he's about to spin, Gallus is about to, when Gallus gets to about, let's say right here, we cut uh, Gallus. I'll put a little note. Gallus. Spins to this point right here. 
then cut to bow. So then when he spins, you see her spinning around and it spins around and you see bow in the background. As soon as it gets to about where bow is, um, we can cut to bow. Bo has got his, his notepad and his monitor, his G-Force. Just show a little bit of Him behind the wall, and then we see see him spin by and to show the spin I would just add a little blur effect right here Like so. And then I would add just a little bit of color. So, to show him spinning by, and then I would write a little note, Gallus flies past. Window. The last shot would be on that one. Him pointing his bow looking out as he goes past. So he's, oh, I should do this. He's looking this way. He flies past. Gallus flies past and then he looks at it and then he looks at his, and then we'd have like a little acting beat where he looks at his monitor.
like so. Looks at it, and then maybe he writes a little note down to himself, looks at it. You can just have him look at it and then look up again, or, or writing a little note down. Maybe he writes, he looks, uh, writes a little note. Um, brush Mechanic asks, what are you thinking about when turning thumbnails into rough boards? Um, thinking about final staging and composition and performance. Um, making sure that I've, I've got the right camera direction. This is where I, I can make mistakes in terms of where I want my camera to go and how I want to lead the eye. And then, um, then, I, I, then I start doing my first pass uh, with finalizing the board itself with uh, keeping in mind camera and how I'm leading the eye with that. Because I, at this point, these are all experiments. That's why I might do several thumbs of the same idea. You know, maybe he's looking at, you know, he, he we cut in tight, cut in tight. For this, um, I'm gonna do shot, shot two, three, Four, and then this would be shot zero, zero, three, zero, one, zero, zero, three, zero, two, zero, zero, three, zero, four, uh, and then five, and then uh, shot zero, zero, four. Zero one, zero two, zero three, zero four, and then if I do a cut in tight, this would be a, a new shot. Or I can do the same action in this shot right here. Um, it's up to me. Where if I look at it, I can cut in, I can cut in tight, and then uh, as he's writing his little notes down. Uh, what does cut in tight mean? Cut in tight. So the camera's medium shot right now, and and it's it's, it's essentially this. If if I have a character that's standing here like this, and he's waving, hello. And it's a it's a it's a sort of a medium shot, and he's waving to someone off camera. Uh, cutting in tight would be this would be one shot. Rather than tracking and zooming in, I would just cut to cut to it cut in tight to and then I should I should specify cut into uh, close up. Cut in tight to close up. So then I would, I'm cutting in tight to a close-up. That's my own little note to myself to say, hey, cut in tight. So rather than, you can either zoom in, which these arrow keys, these arrows indicate zooming in, the camera's zooming in, or you cut in by making a note, cut in. And it's up to the editor to have that choice or the director to uh, decide what's the best move for that cut in tight or zoom in or do a quick zoom in. Um, there's, there's three different ways. You can do a smash cut. You could do just a regular cut. A smash cut doesn't make sense for this. It's, it could just be simply, I could just treat it because there's no reason to cut in tight. I can just really do it in just this one shot up here on 004, just add a 005 and then 006 panel to do the action of him taking a note and not and not do this this shot here, which I just put an arrow next to. Someone asks, why would you do that instead of a zoom in? Why would I do? It, it's just a matter of, of aesthetics and, and it's, it's a matter of style, whether I think it works or not. I mean, story point wise, it doesn't make sense to for a moment where he's just writing a note to do a smash cut because a smash cut is like, dun, 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 or, 
you know, so it's to get a reaction from the audience. Um, cutting in tight, a soft cut in tight, you know, nothing too extreme is just showing him intently working. Or if I just keep it a medium shot and he's looking at it and he's, he's working, um, it could just be like a very passive, oh, I'm checking my thing and I'm, I'm writing my note. And then, um, then we're, we're moving on. We're medium close up. Or if I cut it tight, maybe, you know, I'm doing it more intently. You know, to show him like he's serious. Um, each one has its own storytelling sensibility that you could add to the overall story arc of what you're trying to get across. So that's what I'm saying. Camera is really important when you're telling the right story. How you use the camera uh, can greatly help, uh, can make or break a story, um, especially when it goes into editing, if you don't have the right shots. So um, it's up to you to decide what shot is the right shot for that beat, for that emotion, for that, um, that moment in time as you're bringing your audience through the story that you're trying to tell. Okay, guys, it's late. I am about to call it quits. I, I actually got some work done, which is awesome. Um, I was able to, to kind of go through and talk a little bit more about thumbnails. I got through part of this uh, sequence too, which is pretty awesome. Um, I feel like I've, I've made some headway now. You know, we, we talked about this opening shot. Um, we talked about introducing the characters. This is the first time that we're introducing the characters. That's another thing. This is the very first time we see the characters. It's the pilot show. Um, we might have seen them in the title, but this is the first time where we're actually engaging and, and seeing each one of their personalities at work. And so it's crucial as I do this that, you know, when I draw this character spinning him around, it's giving the audience this first impression of who Sue is. It's giving the audience the first impression of who Gallus is. And then when you see... Bo for the first time, it's giving you an impression of who Bo. Bo is, you know, uh, a scientist. Gallus is, a, Gallus is a fearless kind of like, let's do this. And then Sue is sort of like, yay, this is fun. And I want to show that immediately in the boards without necessarily showing any kind of dialogue. If, and that's the thing that's important. I want to get, these are all first impressions of who these characters are. And the clearer that you can illustrate them and act them out, the better it's going to be for the audience to get who, oh, Gallus is, is this, let's do this. Sue is like, yay, and spinning them around. And you can get that sense of who they are just in these few boards uh, by how, the, how you, you set the performance and the acting of your board. Really important for me right now when I'm first time the audience will ever, and then we can get into the moment. So, um, you know, I might want to put uh, silly, See Gallus. But serious scientist. Uh, arc the lunchtime because uh, I do have a day job and uh, it's going really well. Um, I, I'm having a lot of fun with that project. And so, with that being said, I'm going to switch it over to uh, the banner real quick. Where are you, Banner? Say hello, Mateo, you're on the camera again. Hey guys, so listen, go to Sketch to Animate. If you wanna to go to the Draw Over uh, Mondays, go to uh, twitch.tv forward slash Sketch to Animate. Go to Sketch to Animate, subscribe if you haven't, tell your friends, Spread the word about what I'm trying to do here. Um, it, we're, it's all about educating, inspiring, and entertaining you guys uh, with through through my original content, uh, through sketches, and through drawovers. Um, we're here to kind of help and educate you guys along the way, especially during this time of COVID, where everyone's still pretty much stuck at home. I know we are getting out doing doing small things here and there, but it is still happening. Go up to uh, YouTube. Uh, check this out if you want to see this again. Anyone that's on YouTube now on Facebook, you can always watch it on Facebook, but go to YouTube and subscribe to YouTube and watch the replays. I also have Draw Over Mondays there during, uh, during this session or during um, after Monday, I, I post everything onto YouTube uh, for my Draw Over Mondays. And then 
to support me in terms of what I do with YouTube and all these, the back to basic tutorials that I'm putting together and also anything that I'm doing on this live feed, I put together PDFs of all the live feeds that I have and I post them into Patreon. And if you become a Patreon tier person, uh, you'll get to have access to those PDFs and everything that I talked about today. So, uh, and also help make a decision on what, what gets made in the back to basic tutorials. Um, and so, also, if you want to uh, go to uh, um, Creature Art Teacher, let me switch it back over here. Say goodbye, Mateo. Good job, by the way, answering questions. Everyone, give him a round of applause. Yay! Uh, let's see some little, little thumbs up for Mateo there. Um, let's switch it back over to Big Travis. So if you guys want to uh, go to Creature Art Teacher, um, uh, if you want to write in, can you write in creature art teacher, just type it in creature art teacher, all one word, creature art teacher.com go to creature art teacher.com and download, uh, or pre-order the new Calipeg tutorial that will be released this Friday. Um, if you get it now, it's going to be a 50%, I think it's like a 50% off or it's a huge discount if you pre do a pre-order now. And again, um, the interface is slightly different than the version of the tutorial that I have out, but we will be adding an update to that with all the new latest features that uh, Calipay currently has. So I can, I'll go through all of those things. Also, I'm thinking about doing an extra live stream where I'm just focused on Calipay and the iPad. I have to figure it out if I can do that within all the work that I'm doing currently. Um, but uh, yeah, there's that. So check it out and also go to Calipay dot com um, if you go to Calipeg they um, their subscription if you have an iPad it's a great software program um, I highly recommend it I would not I would not tell you otherwise yes I am a part of their their team um, I am thoroughly believing in what they're doing because um, I have a lot of say along with my other artist friends and they're very artist friendly uh, they're making improvements to it every day I would say hands down it is it is a better animation app than most all other animation apps for the iPad that I've seen. Probably the best one. Um, and it's going to get better and better and better and better. Now, with that being said, check it out it's for seven days. Try it out. Um, if you get a chance and you have and you have the funds, go check out uh, the Calipeg tutorial. Um, and even if you don't have Calipeg. Uh, it might be useful for you in terms of how I approach, uh, just like I'm doing things in TV paint and I'm doing a lot of things in TV paint. What I'm teaching you is fundamentally important for how you approach anything, no matter if you're using TV paint, storyboard pro Photoshop, um, all of the things that I'm doing here, um, is relative or is relatable, uh, to the process of developing shows. Anyways, I hope you guys had a great time. Um, I had a great time. I talk too much. How, uh, any other questions or is everyone saying goodbye? Yeah. Everyone's just saying goodbye. Well, goodbye everybody. Have a great one. Um, we'll see you next week and hopefully I'll make an announcement. Uh, if I get a chance to actually show you guys some Calipeg stuff. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I'm going to do my intro outro and we will talk to you later. See ya. Mm -hmm.